Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Jason Elmore at the Wexford and Misaki Circuit Court in Michigan. He has a defendant before him who is being sentenced for running from the police, basically. And this man has a habit of running from the police. He's just not very good at it. I'll let you guys watch. 23-13666FH. Appearances, please. Before you begin, Ian Burns, I'll be up to Mr. Max. Thank you. Mr. Max is making his way to the defense table. Um, the court also recognizes Mr. Stephen Saladay as an agent from the Michigan Department of Corrections, who has prepared our pre sentence investigation report. You all may be seated. All right. Let me take a quick look to see if I had any corrections noted. Mr. Wiggins, um, do you have any amendments, corrections, or objections to make to the contents of the report? I do, Your Honor. On CHA uh, 284, page 1, your additional information, I think it would be prudent to put in there that the uh, defendant was violated for failing to enroll in testing and failed to enroll in the tether program. Is that, on, is that for up here? Yes. Yes. I have I have a factual issue with this. Room. Okay. Oh, pardon me. No, no, it's okay. So let's go out. I won't make any amendments until I hear from you. Go ahead, Mr. Rudy. Well, Your Honor, on 321-24, the court found that the violation existed in remanded into the custody of the And uh, hold on, let's take a look here at that. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Wiggins? Yes, Your Honor. Several things. Um, On CFJ 284, page 6, offense 3 of 25, it's just listed as two counts of DNA. &E. I think uh, we lean indicates which would pan out, but that was uh, B and E for, uh, with intent. So I think we should spell that out so that there's no confusion that that was the misdemeanor B and E. There was no B and E with intent. According to lean, there was. Okay. Back in 1991. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, 91. Okay. To get a disposition of 10 years, it would have to have been a felony. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and make that change. Thank you. I believe that's it. All right, Mr. Burns, any corrections, objections to the content of the uh, PSI? No, I have no additional ones, and I appreciate the corrections and sure. revisions that the two of you have both pointed out. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Burns, then I'll return to allocution. Yes, I, I, you know, we, we spent time talking on this, um, and I know everybody has spent a lot of time reviewing it, and I've talked to both of the story and your probation, and I understand where this one is. I would like to point out that it is a scrounge, so I do have the other counties worked out where we would be able to be in Macosta, uh, not that it factors in. Mr. Uh, Maxson is in heart failure. He's got his best on now with his monitor. Uh, be much more appropriately addressed in Macosta. Uh, as far as uh, the offenses themselves, I would just like to point out they're not born out of malice, or uh, they're they're although they may have been malum uh, and say they are they weren't born out of malice, malicious intent. They really were born out of fear. The result was terrible, and he takes uh, responsibility for that. Just ask that we. Uh, uh, I, I also, as I pointed out, I feel that the the sentencing guidelines are draconian and indefensible on many levels. I think that with the gap here, it's much more clearly he would be arguably at least kept in county. I think without the gap, that as you know, we've all meticulously gone over, and it does not appear that there is a gap. Um, unfortunately, he caught a serious thing when he was uh, hanging around the wrong people when he was a very young man and got himself a record early on and has not been able to shake that. So now it's going to have some sting again. Um, but uh, I would just ask again if uh, there's a way to keep him in county. Uh, but other than that, I appreciate everybody's time on this, and I, I know that the county has expended a lot of time and effort on this. So thank you. Thank you. One moment. 
Mr. Wiggins. Thank you, Your Honor. There's several things that stand out about this case for me. Uh, one, when I review the defendant's criminal history, um, I show that about 16 out of the 25 offenses listed, he was on some sort of supervision, whether it be parole, bond, district court probation. That's about 64% of his crimes came while he was supervised. So it's, it's clear that and the department believes this as well, he is not supervisable. He committed the crimes uh, while he was on bond for Gratiot County. Then he absconded on their bond, picked up an absconding charge during the pendency of our case. Then after our case, he picks up another flea in a loop. And then going through his history, I, you know, he's escaped from jail while waiting trial. He clearly has a history of fleeing from police officers and resisting arrest. In our case, he fled the Wexford County Sheriff's deputies uh, in the Mesick area by extinguishing, extinguishing his lights, speeds of excess of over 100 miles an hour, and over 70 miles an hour in the trailer park up there, driving through yards, hard braking, and turning around and going the other way, passing cars on double yellows, running stop signs, crashing through a chain link fence to school, and fleeing on foot. I'll be honest, as I'm reading this PSI and, and report over the weekend, I'm envisioning it's like the Dukes of Hazard and Smoking the Bandit, for those of us are old enough to remember that. He put law enforcement at risk and others that were at risk on the road. Uh, the only saving grace in this case is it was after midnight when this all happened, so there weren't a whole lot of people on the road. He clearly has no regard for anybody other than himself. And he even admits that the reasons he committed the offense was because he didn't want to go to jail. He, he just shows a complete lack of, of respect for, for law enforcement and, and human life, honestly. The Department of Corrections is recommending uh, 16 to 24 and 13 to 30 in these cases. Uh, the guidelines are 7 to 23. He's clearly established reasonable grounds that he can't be supervised. And I'm going to ask the court to document or sentence him to the top of the guideline. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mr. Maxson, before the court issues a sentence, you have the right to make a statement if you choose to do so. I now turn to you, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for what I did when I was in graduate uh, jail. I told the officer I needed my meds, my heart medication. And I didn't get up. The time that I got out was Friday, like 4.45. I didn't, you know, I called the tow truck company. And I, you know, I needed my heart meds and I didn't get them. And the following day, I went to uh, Carter City for heart complications and thought died. I lost an uncle, you know, in jail for heart complications. I mean, it's a stupid excuse why I didn't want to stop. And I, you know, I put everybody's life at risk. It was a stupid mistake. I uh, wish I'd never done it. I put everybody in danger. And my dumb choice. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to make one comment. Um, I just have to point out uh, that that's highly irresponsible, but. I, I cannot imagine what they suspected him of to, to chase someone through the town at those rates of speed and through these rural areas um, is also very, very upsetting. And the, the, there should be corrective action taking on the, the department that would, would subject the community to that kind of risk. Unless, again, they're in hot pursuit of somebody who's an offender that's, so it's just, uh, just have to point that out. If this doesn't happen with those egregious facts, if you don't have somebody right behind him going those same speeds, uh, pushing someone who's clearly running. Uh, you've got his place, you've got his stuff. It, uh, that's something, anyway, that's a decision that should be made a different way. I just had to point that out. Right. Not that it affects necessarily Mr. Max's sentence, but. All right, thank you. All right, one moment as I put together some thoughts. All right, so. When it comes to sentencing, as I've mentioned in the past, 
when I used to be a military judge, we would just issue a sentence and stand up and walk away. They wouldn't say anything. They law strongly discouraged from even explaining it. However, in Michigan, we don't do that. We're required to discuss a lot. Uh, specifically after the decisions of People versus Posey, uh, People versus Steinhouse, S-T-I-N, H-O-U-S-E. I might have gotten that name wrong. But anyways, we've got to do a lot of talking to explain it and justify the sentence. And so there are a lot of things here to talk about in the case. Number one, why did law enforcement pursue him? A, the suggestion is that they already had his plate. However, I went straight to the description of the offense. And the reason they pursued him was plates were wrong. So I take a, uh, uh, and I'll disagree, I strongly disagree. There doesn't need to be any reprimand for the law enforcement officers. They didn't do anything wrong. I strongly disagree. When somebody is, as uh, lights come on, you stop the car. That's what the law says. The law doesn't say drive as fast as you can get away and then the police officers have to stop. It. When the lights come on, you stop the car. That's it. I don't find that draconian. It's very, very simple. This concept that is sweeping the country that you can disobey the police officers whenever you choose and then turn around and try to blame them, I disagree with. The lights come on, you stop the car. That's what the law says. If you don't do it, you're the one in the wrong. Now, we've already covered here that the defendant was fleeing police at over 100 miles per hour. They couldn't just go and walk away and let the guy go because they didn't know who he was because he didn't have the right tabs and plates and so forth on the vehicle. That doesn't make any sense. So then I turned, I'll, I'll accept, we've already heard a lot of discussion about the um, events of that night. Uh, my Mr. Uh, Maxson's choice. Take a look at what he said. He said he was sorry for what he did. I don't buy that. He's sorry he got caught. Lights off, intentional. 100 miles an hour, intentional. Neighborhoods, intentional choices by Mr. Maxson. Now, in his description of the offense, he said, I stupidly panicked and took off like an idiot. Yes, I could characterize that statement or your actions as stupid, maybe, but I don't want to be offensive, so I take it as this. It was intentional. You intentionally fled police knowing you had other warrants and you put people at risk. It wasn't stupid. It was extremely reckless and obnoxious. You violated the law, you put other people at risk, and the law enforcement officers were doing their job. Then when I look at your criminal history, you are the, there is so much here for proportionality, reasonableness, and reasonable grounds. You are not supervisable. You have had in conviction two of 25, or 20 of 25, uh, you tested positive while on parole, quote, numerous times, end quote. Conviction three of 25, you were on bond, again, underneath the narrative, testing positive numerous times for controlled substance. Four of 25, you were on bond, and this is when you picked up the escape. And then, there are other entries underneath the narrative for that offense regarding the testing positive for multiple times and so forth. Then number five of 25, you were on parole. Now, I don't know what the resolution of that case was, but I can look down to the very next one and see that number six of 25, you were on parole. Number seven of 25, you were on bond or parole at least. When that offense occurred, and that was a driver license suspended. All right, not a big deal, but here's what I circled. Also, 
no plates. Does that sound familiar compared to this case? It sure does to me. But trial license suspended means the defendant is always going to choose, you're not always, but will often choose to disregard authority. Number eight of 25. Uh, again, the defendant was on bond and he picked up a uh, probation. Uh, looks like a probation violation. Uh, some additional jail. Then he picked up 9 of 25. Then he picked up 10 of 25 while he apparently was on bond. Then we've got more driver license suspended. Again, the person will disobey uh, authority when he thinks he can get away with it. Oh, and by the way, count and an and entry 10 of 25. Uh, the defendant picked up an, an RNO, which of course is what this case is all about. We get some other disorderly persons, some more driver license suspended to come along. Then we got entry 13 of 25. The defendant was on probation when that happened. Then when we look at 14 of 25, uh, that one's just a, a motor vehicle car charge. There's not a whole lot there, but when I look at 15 of 25, uh, that occurred while on bond. Um, then we have 16 of 25. While on bond, driver license suspended. Again, we'll uh, do what he wants when he thinks no one's looking as long as he doesn't get caught. Then we have 17 of 25. That was that occurred while the defendant was on bond. Then we have, can't mention 18 of 25 too much because that one was dismissed. So we'll look at 19 of 25. That occurred while the defendant was on bond. Then we have 20 of 25. This is one of the charges that's pending. That occurred while he was on bond. In fact, he was on bond for that when this case occurred. One of 25, if I didn't cover that one. Yeah, 21 of 25 while on bond. That one, that one, I'm sorry, that was the one that resulted in a conviction. And uh, it's the one that we're here for today. Get Arno fleeing, looting. And meanwhile, he had this other case from Gratiot County, which he was on bond, which allegedly curve while he was on bond. He's got 23 of 25, another one while on bond, 24 of 25, 25 of 25. No, all of that establishes that the defendant is unsupervisable. All of that establishes the defendant will disregard law enforcement or any authority when he gets the chance. There is no better, or hardly ever, in a case where I look and say, this is the case of proportionality, reasonableness, and reasonable grounds. Now, and everyone is allowed to have their opinion. Uh, and I do appreciate that Mr. Burns went above and beyond uh, the duty that I would see from almost any defense attorney and scheduled a meeting last week and met with myself and Mr. Wiggins in chambers, we talked a little bit about some theories, and I didn't say a whole lot because it's never really appropriate, at least I don't think so. But I don't think our laws are draconian for putting people in prison. We have slashed the rules and laws, which is absolutely okay. I don't take any challenge with it. That makes it very difficult for judges to put someone into a prison cell and even into a jail cell. When I look at uh, uh, conviction number two here uh, for the attempted flee and elude, it is a straddle cell, which the law says I'm not allowed to give jail unless I find there to be reasonable grounds. So we've done a lot in the state of Michigan to help people avoid confinement. However, we still give the judges authority. And I've already established enough reasonable grounds. And I, again, don't believe our rules are draconian. The law is pretty simple. When the lights turn on, you stop your car. That's simple. I, I, I don't, and when you have had these issues in the past and you have bond, I'm sorry, you're on bond, pending other cases and other places, you know what's going on. And when you've been to prison three times in the past, you know what's going on. This wasn't an act of stupidity. This was an intentional act, putting people at risk. Now, one comment, and I 
understand that the defendant has some mental, I'm sorry, medical issues. And I do appreciate that. And I'm quite confident the system will help take care of him. However, as if he's, his medical conditions, and I'm not challenging him, he didn't have a heart attack driving at 100 miles an hour, careening through fences and other things. Leading police, getting out of the car and leading police officers on a chase. And I'm not the type who's going to allow a medical condition to go, well, you know what, based upon your age or medical condition, I'm not going to give you jail. That's not how it works. I believe that we placed, we, the judges are supposed to place a sentence, kind of like placing a price tag on someone's choices. If the Department of Corrections chooses to let them out some other time, great. If they are able to provide a medical treatment, great. That costs the state of Michigan something to pay for. That's on the state of Michigan. That's not my job. My job is to sentence the defendant based upon the conduct that I see and based upon the report. And I've covered a great deal. The court sentences the defendant to sit to $68 state minimum fees, a $130 crime victim's right fund fee. I'm going to respect that the law changes in a couple of weeks. So therefore, I'm not going to charge any court costs. And I'm not going to charge any fines. And there's no attorney fee, as Mr. Burns has retained. Your Honor? Yep. I just said, when, when you were sure. just re, uh, saying your uh, factual statements, yep. um, you said that he had been to prison three times. He's been twice. I just want oh, to make sure you had that. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, no problem. I just I, want that was right it's over okay. It's okay. Here's what it, it was 29 year gap, but it was two years. Yeah, two, thank you. Two times. It was on CFJ 284. Maybe we need to make that change on page one in the fourth paragraph. It says he has been to prison for three prior sentences, and I misstated it. Thank you. I accept that. I just want to make sure that uh, no, no. you in your head. Had to, yep. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, the court is, uh, sets restitution at $1,516 payable to Mesa Consolidated Schools. The court sentences the defendant for count one. One moment. Court sends the defendants for counts one and two to a prison term of 16 to 24 months for count one and 16 to 30 months for count two and awards the defendant in each matter 63 days of credit. And again, I find that this sentence based upon the information I've already stated on the record and that which is contained and the pre-sentence uh, investigation report establishes proportionality, reasonableness, and uh, reasonable grounds. Have I missed anything, Mr. Saladay? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Mr. Maxson, Mr. Burns is going to bring you two copies of one document. You're going to place your initials on the first copy. To place your initials on the first copy, neither elects nor waives any rights. It merely acknowledges receipt of the other copy. This document tells you that you have the right to appeal the conviction and sentence in your case. That is typically done by filing a claim of right to appeal. However, based upon the pleas in this case, any appeal must be done by filling out a or filing an application for leave to appeal. If you choose to file an application for leave to appeal and you want the court to consider appointing an attorney to assist you, you complete the bottom half of the document and return to the court within 42 days. If you choose not to appeal, you may simply dispose of your copy of the document. Your Honor, I'm handing you the, uh, the document right now. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Burns. All right. Um, Is that appropriate for this Yeah, yeah. You're, I just want to make sure you no, no, you're, you're good. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Um, I'm just going to add underneath request for appointment of counsel. He didn't date it. I'm just going to date that line. So that way his days are marked according to the um, Thank you, color record. Thank you. So I'm just adding to it. 
uh, April 15th, uh, 2024. I'll file that and the court clerk's office will uh, get that ball rolling. Anything else, Mr. Uh, Saladay? No, Your Honor. Mr. Wiggins? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Burns, anything else? Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We are adjourned. So I just wonder if this defendant has learned anything. Has he learned, finally, to stop running from the police after this last go around? He's got, what, 13 to, no, 16 to 30 months. So a year and four months to two and a half years. But do you think he learned anything? Do you think he's just going to run from the police the next time he gets the opportunity? Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.